Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Female General Eldest Princess, a story we haven't read in a while. Hello, Julie, Heart Spider, Lobsoul, Phil, Gandalf. I always turn the wrong direction. Hello, kitty. He's only sitting here because I have a new plant in my window and he would like to eat it. And I'm keeping him from doing so. That's Move that over a little bit. There we go. Why is the chat box not working? Let's see. Oh, maybe it is and it just wasn't up yet. Anyway, um, today we are continuing from chapter eight of Female General Eldest Princess. Um, last time, uh, our story is in uh, an ancient China that's in the middle of war with the, uh, the Huns. Um, they are uh, on the borders at the north, I believe. Our hero, Lin Wanyua, is a young woman whose family died because of the war, and so is now bent on revenge. She's disguised herself as a boy so that she can enter the army and be a man and defeat the Huns, <laughs> basically. Um, but a little more serious than that. Um, last time, they had a battle and they won, but unfortunately, uh, not only was uh, Wan Yue injured, she started her period for the first time. So now she's kind of like, ooh, I wonder if I'm going to get caught, if things are going to go bad for me. Um, the other main character, the princess, whose name I don't remember, because we've, on we've only seen her a little bit, um, is uh, her mother just passed away, the empress, and so now she's the eldest. Her, her brother is supposed to be next in line for the throne, but isn't quite old enough yet. And so she's starting to deal with the political fallout of the leader's gone, now what's going to happen? Uh, kind of evaluating who's on her side, who's not. And so the story was kind of introducing us to a few of the people that are probably going to be power players later on. Um, but for now, we are dealing with the uh, front line of the war. Uh, Gandalf, do not eat plant! Do not do this! You stop this! Your crimes are being caught on camera. Look, here, I can even show y'all. Here's one of my poor, poor plant children. Look at this. Look at those leaves. Look at that. It's cut in half. Look at that. Look, look at that one. Look at that one. Look at what he did to this. He's a terrible cat son to my poor plant child. You're terrible, kitty. <sighs> anyway, let us begin with chapter eight. Play a tune of political maneuvers. Meat and wine go to waste behind vermilion gates while the bones of the frozen lie on the ground. The large span of soil on Lee Kingdom's borderline had already been trampled barren by the hooves of war horses and the feet of soldiers. However, it was still a scene of peace celebrated by song and dance in the Imperial Palace of the Lee Kingdom. The flames of war on the northern border would never spread here. The emperor of the imperial city would never see the desolation of the borders either. Empress Li Qingcheng had already entered the empress's mausoleum, but the emperor did not pass down a decree for the entire kingdom to go through a mourning period. As the various seniors had already returned to the court, the imperial palace had quickly recovered to its usual glamour after a brief silence for Li Qingcheng's passing. If they're dead, then they're dead. No matter how revered and brilliant they were in their life, everything returned to dust once they died. That was fate. Even someone as legendary as Li Qingcheng could not escape from it. The Emperor of the Li Kingdom had personally participated in Li Qingcheng's burial. However, Li Xian had not seen any sorrow on his face. A man who possessed the highest power would never have a lack of women. There were swaths of beautiful young women in the back palace of the Lee Kingdom, and each of them were attractive in their own ways. They were all waiting for the Emperor's favoritism, even if many of them would never have a look at the Emperor's fine presence in their entire lives. That was why, even when Li Qingcheng was once the most beautiful woman in the world, her passing did not seem to be worth the Emperor's sorrow. After the royal banquet set by the emperor to accommodate the various seniors who had returned to the capital, what followed would be the seniors' private banquets. Since they were all brothers and sisters of the same ancestors, they should have a reunion after a long period of absence. 
Li Xian was dressed in a plain-colored palace attire as she sat in a four-horse carriage that was heading to Senior Chi's estate. The Li Kingdom's streets were very wide. It had more than enough space to accommodate a four-horse carriage, but even so, the common folk of Li Kingdom still silently knew to avoid its way. Lee Kingdom's kingdom etiquette had the line, The Son of Heaven rides with six, the heir rides with five, seniors with four, ministers three, officials two, commoners one. The princess is equal to ministers, while the eldest princess may enjoy the privilege of seniors. Since it was a four-horse carriage, its revered status was evident, no matter how plain the carriage was. Noble Wuxiang was already awaiting by the gates when Li Xian alighted the carriage. So, uh, essentially, they were saying they knew by how many horses were on the carriage that the eldest princess, Li Xian, was passing by. That's our secondary protagonist. Noble Wuxiang has been troubled. I shall give my thanks here. Please, come in, eldest princess. Senior Qi's estate was not very big, but it was quiet and beautiful. There was rockery in its courtyard, and the interior was decorated with rich silks and brocades. It had a garden with bamboo and pines, luxuriantly green. Escorted by Xia Noble Wu Sheng, Li Xian came to the main hall of Senior Qi's estate. His consort of the Chu clan and his seven-year-old Shi Shi Li Ke, Shi Shi Li Ke was already waiting there. Shan Er greets brother Senior Chi, sister-in-law. This consort of the Chu clan greets Her Highness, the eldest princess. Ke Er greets auntie. Li Xian helped up Shi Ji Li Ke from his courtesy. She rubbed his head fondly, then she said, Ke Er has already gotten so big after two years. You already carry yourself with the graceful bearing of brother Senior Chi, truly the son of a heroic father. Thanks, auntie. Senior Chi Li Zhen smiled too. Then he said, Royal sister should join in the feast. The wine today are all su jue, and the meat dishes are all made with three net meat. Royal sister need not hesitate. Enjoy it freely. Um, so... Okay. So an explanation of what that was. Su jue, jue? Su jue wine is meant for vegetarian feasts. It's made for monks and nuns. Three net meat means that the person person having it did not see the animal killed, did not hear its cry during slaughter, and it was not slaughtered out of the butcher's desire to eat it. Um, this has a lot to do with uh, Buddhist taboos and such. Uh, the idea that you're not really supposed to kill, you're not supposed to create suffering, so there's a lot of rules about how you can eat meat. And these are various variations, I suppose, of meat that you're allowed to eat because of the way that it died. Brother Senior Chi has been considerate. Li Jian sat on the master's seat while Li Xian sat on the right. Li Jian's consort sat on the left. His son sat by her side while noble Wu Shang sat on the last seat. Hello, Hira. Welcome. Senior Chi clapped his hands. Then a group of servant girls flowed in like a line of fish. Exquisite dishes filled up the table in the turn of an eye. Royal sister, this desert mutton is a specialty of my Qi lands. You must have a try. As he said that, Senior Qi Li Jian personally carved a piece of meat from the whole lamb. Then he placed it on Li Xian's plate. Li Xian tasted it, then she smiled. Royal brother's land has such delicacies. It is a great regret for Xian Er only to have gotten a taste of it today. Hello, folks. Natasha, welcome. You haven't missed much. Our royal princess is at a feast. Senior Chi laughed loudly when he heard this, then said, Royal sister, oh, royal sister, when have you become so gluttonous? If royal sister likes it, I'll have my estate cook deliver it to you. From now on, you may eat it whenever you wish. Then Shan Er has many thanks to older brother. Once the meal was mostly over, Senior Chi gave a look to noble Wu Shang. The latter understood at once. He invited consort of the Chu, surname, and Shi Ji Li Ke back outside. Then he stood at guard outside the hall. The siblings met each other's eyes. Li Xian went straight to the point by saying, Royal sister has come in place of Ju Er. A vacant seat awaits. May brother Senior Chi support the greater picture. Li Jian had not expected that Li Xian would just skip the preliminaries entirely. He was surprised for a moment. Then he picked up the wine cup before him. He answered leisurely after a sip. 
Why does royal sister say such things? The crown prince is the lawful heir. Though he is young, his blood is pure, and he has done no wrong before. Why the talk of a vacancy? Presently, excuse me, presently, my, elder, uh, my empress mother has passed, leaving my younger brother without support. Shianair is a woman who will only end up as a wife that must follow her husband. Uncle is far away at the borders. Politics are not his strong suit. The two of us siblings truly have no other support, and the matters of court change rapidly. Empress Mother has left her final decree before she passed, that glory and prosperity are merely passing clouds. She wishes for us two siblings to know when to advance and when to retreat. Li Zhen fell silent after listening to Li Xian's words. He thought back to that woman who had a beauty that could overthrow kingdoms and cities. She always had an expression of far-sighted wisdom on her face, and her smile was very mild. Her eyes that were soft like water contained an acceptance. Mm? Better not be eating plants. <sighs> her eyes that were soft like water contained an acceptance that came from understanding all things of the world. As he looked again at this royal sister of his, who had 70% similarity to the late empress, the look in her eyes was the same, and her expression was sincere, too. Li Jian had no choice but to believe the words were true. Royal sister, I have no interest in that position. You can find someone else. Li Jian looked at Li Xian with a mild expression. A fleeting surprise flashed by Li Xian's face. She gave a smile, then she continued to say, Huan has a solitary personality while Pei is still young and his character is not yet evident. Brother Senior Chuan is obstinate and addicted to battle. If he ascends to the throne, the common folk of Li Kingdom will enjoy both blessings and suffer misfortune. And Brother Senior Chu has 10,000 land rights and fiefs, and he's also favored by Emperor Father. Consort Liang is also intelligent, well-mannered, and virtuous. But Brother Senior Chu has never liked Ju Er. If he ascends to the throne, he may not allow peace for the two of us siblings. Xian Er does not wish for my younger brother to be held captive in this imperial city for the rest of his life. I simply wish he may ultimately possess a piece of land where the two of us siblings may live out the remainder of our lives with each other. Brother Senior Chi cares for the common people, and you uphold benevolence and honesty. Ke Er has inherited your strength of character too. That would ensure that the Lee Kingdom has a worthy successor at the very least. Such is truly the best option in Xian Er's heart. If Brother Senior Chi declines, Shan Air will have to invest in both Senior Chu in consideration for the long-term future of the Li Kingdom. But with Senior Chu's character, who knows how many members of the royal family would survive years down the line. So to follow all that, she's going through all the various children of the Emperor and the Empress. Um, she and her brother, I think, are the only pure children of both Emperor and Empress. Everybody else are half-siblings. The guy she's talking to is a half-sibling. She wants him to be the Emperor since kid brother's too young and she's a woman. Um, I guess also because she's young. I don't know, because her mother was ruling. I, I don't know. Anyway, for some reason it will be difficult. Uh, Senior Chu could do it. But he's a selfish bastard and would probably kill all his, uh, all the other people that could take the throne. Probably imprison her younger brother. She doesn't want that. Um, so she wants this guy, Senior Chi, to take over. Um, the language might be a little confusing in the way that they keep referring to themselves in the third person. It's a way of, um, translating a kind of a... Uh, pronoun, I guess, that's very, like, royals would talk about themselves in the third person, kind of, doesn't translate well into English, and it's kind of hard to follow. But when she says something like, this is the best option in Xian Er's heart, she means herself. She is Li Xian. Xian Er is a nickname, a uh, way of kind of cutesifying her name a little bit. Li Xian raised the wine cup before her leisurely, then she downed it in one go. She seemed to have spoken too much. Her throat felt dry. A sudden, ambiguous gleam flashed in Li Jian's eyes. He looked at Li Xian as he said seriously, This lord does not care who sits in that position, but Li Xuan can't sit on it. Then what does Brother Senior Qi intend to do? Li Xian was smiling, but not a trace of her inner thoughts could be seen on her face. 
I am willing to sweep away obstructions for the crown prince and to support the crown prince up on the throne. But once things have been completed, I want the crown prince to allow me to attain whatever I demand. Huh. You wish to make Ju'er into a puppet. Li Xian smiled coldly in her heart, but her expression still appeared pleasant and mild. She looked straight into Li Jen's eyes as she said quietly, Since a vacancy of seat has been proposed in the beginning, what is there to fear of unlimited demands? All right! Li Jen slapped the table. There were a few degrees more admiration in the way that he looked at Li Xian now. He said from the bottom of his heart, Xian Er, you have truly matured. If you were born a man, you would be the one for that throne without a doubt. Royal brother is humorous. Shan Er is nothing more than a weak woman. And from now on, I will still need to rely on brother Senior Chi. A toast! Senior Chi Li Jian did not answer. He simply filled up Li Xian's wine cup before he raised his own. The two of them knocked their cups, then they downed the wine within it. The moon had risen above the willow tree. Li Xian got up and bid her leave. Uh, the moon risen above the willow tree is a quote from a poem, it looks like. Yes. Um, I don't know that... It, I, it doesn't explain any context, but, but probably just... There's a tr tradition in Chinese literature that seems to like... They like to reference the poetry, so it, it's likely just a way of referencing something. You know, sometimes it has double meaning. I don't know enough about this poem to know if it does. Hey, Liz, welcome. Uh, not much. Everybody's having a dinner party and talking about the throne. <laughs> Once Li Shen had settled down in the horse carriage, she rubbed her temples with some weariness. She said towards the empty space in the carriage, the eldest princess went to Senior Chi Estate for a feast. The consort and Shi Ji both left after the meal, while Noble Wu Shang guarded the door. The two of them conversed in secret for an hour before leaving. Report this information word for word to Senior Chu. Understood. By the time that a raspy voice traveled over, the shadow had already vanished. Only then did Li Xian take down her hand that was pressed on her temple. As she looked at the scenery outside the carriage window, she rested her fingers lightly on its frame. A little tune of political maneuvers. Mm. So she said she didn't want Chu to take over, but then she still... She told the guy she didn't want Chu to be in charge, but she actually did. She's sending Chu a message? Hmm... All right, so our chat box is not working, and I don't know why. Ugh. I'll have to mess with that later and see why that's not working, but for now, might as well just take that away, because it's not, nothing's there. Ugh. Chapter 9, An, Uninten an Untended Willow Grows. Um, okay, so that's, that's half of a phrase. Diligent care fails to make the flower bloom while a willow tree grew from a willow branch that was stuck carelessly in the mud. In other words, go with the flow. <laughs> so it's a poetic way of saying you can't force results. Go with the flow. A millet sown in spring, a thousand harvested in autumn. Time flew. In the turn of an eye, it was already the season of the autumn harvest. After this autumn, it would be the third year that Lin Wanyua had entered the military camp. The autumn harvest was the most important period in the year to the tens of thousands of farming families in the Lee Kingdom. The result of the harvest determined the quality of life for the rest of the year. The autumn harvest was also an important period to the court of Lee Kingdom. The colossal base quota of the farming families was an important source of taxes. The autumn harvest was equally important to the Huns. For the Huns who lived with long winters but had never cultivated their land, the spoils of war they attained during the autumn harvest directly determined their chances of making it through that long winter. Lin Wan Yua held a spear in her hand while she carried the black bow that she found from the weapon dump on her back. A podal was tied to her waist. She followed the troops that were moving camp, mo marching further into the backlands of the Lee Kingdom's borders. General Li Mu had decided to move the battlefront for nearly a hundred miles forward so as to provide greater buffer distance for the masses of farming families behind them. <laughs> 
Senior Chu seems like the best choice, but it'd be weird to have a Spanish emperor of China, right? Uh, yeah. The, the translation of senior keeps throwing me off because it's like not a word I keep expecting to hear in a Chinese translation. Um, it's like a, a mil it's like a, a noble title. I think it would have been better to just keep the Chinese term, whatever it was, because it just sounds so weird. I don't know. Senior Chu. Anyway, that's what we'll say, because that's what the translation says. I do wonder what it was originally. Okay. That would also signify that the soldiers of Lee Kingdom would be using their bodies of flesh and blood to create a barrier for the common people behind them. Presently, everyone's faces were grave in the troops. When this season arrived each year, the frontier guard of Lee Kingdom's northern border would have to face invasions that were even more ferocious than usual and more frequent. That was because the Huns needed to stock up on rations for the winter. In this season, the Hun soldiers would have a fierce determination to never give up until their objective was achieved. That was also why this was the season where the Lee Kingdom's soldiers would have the greatest casualties. Lin Wan Yue's period stopped coming. The danger of exposing her identity had temporarily resolved. However, Lin Wan Yue's complexion had become terribly pale. She would also feel cold from time to time. There was a dark chill that spread out from within her body, which was a side effect from ingesting the Yao Wang flower. Um, if you'll remember, she went in search of a flower, a medicine that she remembered um, hearing from the, the local doctor in her town could be used basically to uh, destroy your uterus, if I remember, menopause? I don't know. She doesn't have periods anymore. Poor baby. You're like 16. Stop doing murder and go take care of yourself. Ugh, so sad. Ai, have you heard? Heard about what? Senior Chu was attacked by s assassins. To save Senior Chu, his consort blocked the sword with her body. Now she's dead. For real? I've heard Senior Chu's consort was a first-rate beauty. Truly a shame. Ai, is this the second one, right? The previous consort of his also died from assassins. Do you think this Senior Chu is a bad omen for wives? What's going on there? The pioneer officer who was passing by on a horse shouted once he heard whispering from the infantry soldiers' troops. The two chatting soldiers, who were not far away from Lin Wan Yue, shut their mouths at once. The pioneer officer looked around sternly, then he spurred his horse and left. Under the sun, the vast and mighty army progressed deeper into the backlands. The sun was still harsh during the autumn, especially in a dry environment like the north. Many soldiers were already sweating all over after walking for dozens of miles, all except Lin Wan Yue. She did not sweat from the harsh and hot sunlight. Instead, she felt it was very comfortable. It dispersed the sinister chill that came from within her from time to time. Lin Wan Yue had used one of her days off to successfully find the Ya Wang flower. She felt as if she'd fallen into a cave of ice right after she ingested it. Her entire body had turned cold. Even though it was noon at that time, Lin Wan Yue still felt as if she was freezing. She curled up in agony on the ground, hugging herself as she trembled. Her vision had turned somewhat hazy, too, and there was one moment where she felt as if she'd returned to Chan Changguan village. The villagers were still what they used to look like. They smiled at her, and she smiled, too. Her heart was completely at ease. She could finally leave the military camp. She could finally return to her identity. She wouldn't have to constantly worry about getting exposed anymore. It was truly so tiring to live. Following that, Lin Wan Yue entered into total darkness. When dusk faded into darkness, Lin Wan Yue woke up. That day, Lin Wan Yue sat on her shins after waking up. She was silent at first, after which she burst into unbridled laughter. Then she went back to being silent in the end. She returned to the military camp. She had returned to the place that had supported her to struggle and survive, but it was also a place where no hope for the future could be seen. She had returned to the place that sheltered her and kept her imprisoned once again. Soon, the sun started to lean to the west. General Li Mu ordered for the army to rest and reorganize on the spot, and to set up stoves to cook in the field. Columns of smoke rose into the air. Riding on a horse, General Li Mu, who was accompanied by a deputy general, consoled the soldiers who were eating. 
Lin Wan Yua looked at the piece of meat in her bowl, which had the thickness of a thumb. Woo! The sound of a horn signal traveled over from afar. The cooking smoke had lured in the Huns, who were in urgent need of rations. Enemy invasion! Lin Wan Yua had already thrown down the bowl in her hands when she heard the signal horn. With a spear in her hand and everything prepared, she was ready to enter the battle at any time. Protect the commander-in-chief! Someone shouted. Lin Wan Yua looked towards the sound. A group of people had clustered together ten of steps away. Wasn't that Grand General Li Mu who was surrounded in the middle? Get information! Prepare for battle! Even though he was facing sudden Huns that it came out of nowhere, Li Mu was calm and composed. Sitting on the horse's back, he pulled out the treasure sword from his waist to command the battle. However, there was not enough time to pound the war drums. There was not enough time to arrange flag bearers to signal battle commands either. And there was a limit to the spread of one person's voice. As they were traveling, the line of troops was stretched for a very long distance, and the Huns' horses were quick. The battle was about to become a massacre without any direction. The thunder drones of horse hooves was getting closer and closer. The amplitude of the ground's vibration was also increasing noticeably. Lin Wan Yua's expression was somewhat grave. She could determine the general number of the Huns. This was about to be a tough battle. In an instant, following the dreadful shouts that came from afar, the soldiers at the very front had already taken the brunt of the Hun cavalry and soldiers. The Huns' scimitars and war horses dashed around madly into Lee Kingdom's troops. They swung and cleaved their blades. Fresh blood flew and splattered. Lin Wan Yua burned with anxiety as she looked over from afar. The Lee Kingdom's disadvantage in the weapons of infantry soldiers was utterly exposed here. Lin Wan Yua posted her spear into the ground at once. Then she took down the black bow from her back. She widened her stance, stacked an arrow, took a full breath... Then she drew the bow and took aim. Sooh! An arrow broke through the air, and it sank into the chest of a Hun cavalry far away. He swayed twice, that looked down in astonishment at the middle of his chest that had half of an arrow sticking out. Then he fell from his horse. He was then pierced through again by the spear of a Lee Kingdom soldier. Excellent! Li Mu had witnessed the shot. He could not resist letting out praise. He turned his head back to see that a tanned and skinny young man who wore the uniform of infantry soldiers was standing on a mount. A spear was posted on his side while a podow was tied to his waist. At this moment, the young man stood in an open stance. He stacked an arrow and took aim once again. Although he drew slowly, he had drawn the bow to its fullest. He shot an arrow again. So, The arrow shot by, leaving an after image. It nailed into the middle of a Hun's chest. Li Mu looked at the black bow in Lin Wan Yua's hands. Then he narrowed his eyes. Li Mu was the original owner of that damaged black bow, and he had dealt with it because it had lost its accuracy. Unexpectedly, it had been picked up by an infantry soldier. But what surprised Li Mu even more was that this skinny and tanned young man, who appeared unremarkable, could actually draw his two-stone bow to its fullest. Lin Wan Yua did not know that Li Mu was watching her every action and gesture. Presently, she was fully focused on the battle before her. Her mind was quickly analyzing the situation right before her eyes. In the end, once Lin Wan Yua had estimated the distance the Huns had charged in, she promptly carried the black bow on her back instead. She put the spear at her side, then charged ahead without any hesi- She pulled the spear at her side, then charged ahead without any hesitation. Lin Wan Yua raced towards the Hun cavalry. Other than nervousness, she carried a trace of excitement, too. She had not expected that this black bow would actually be this powerful. It truly was worth the past two months of effort. In order to better use it, she'd drawn two one-stone bows to waste consecutively. Chapter 10 Disappointed with the Reality of One's Life Apparently, that's uh, also from a Chinese idiom. If you find yourself disappointed with the reality of your life, you may as well wear your hair long and set sail for tomorrow. That's lovely. <laughs> Although the Huns had come at full force, the army of Lee Kingdom had stood the test of many battles. It was absolutely nothing ordinary. Even without commands, they had quickly formed a spontaneous formation. 
Follow following the gradual completion of the array, Lee Kingdom's troops slowly took back the dominant power of the battle. Lin Wan Yua pierced her spear heavily through a Hun's body. The gush of fresh blood splattered all over her face and body. When she heard the sound of flesh squelching against the spear, her hands tightened on the pole as white light flashed in her mind. It was as if she had just seen her mom and younger brother, who'd been speared through together. Ah! Lin Wan Yua roared. Her eyes became terrifyingly bloodshot. With a burst of strength, she pierced the Hun's body with her spear again and again. Through the spear, the sound of a weapon entering flesh traveled to Lin Wan Yua's ears again and again. She had forgotten where she was. Before her eyes, there was nothing but a village full of corpses. There was nothing but the fiercely burning flames and herself kneeling in front of the village entrance in sorrow and despair. The, flat, the sound of weapons clashing came from behind her head. Lin Wan Yua shuddered involuntarily. She let go of the spear as if she'd been zapped by electricity, and her expression was completely stunned. Gah, what are you doing? Lin Yu's frantic and exasperated voice rang by Lin Wan Yua's ears. Turns out that once Lin Wan Yua turned possessed, a Hun wielding a scimitar had sneaked up behind her. He'd raised his scimitar and swung it towards the back of her head. Fortunately, Lin Yu had hurried over and knocked the Hun's weapon away in the nick of time. Otherwise, Lin Wan Yua would have already been decapitated. Lin Yu was now fighting with the Hun with his podow at another spot, while Lin Wan Yua stood where she was. She looked down in alarm at her hands that were sticky with hot blood. Lin Wan Yua turned her head back to see a Hun whose chest had been pierced into a mess. He had died with his eyes open, which were still looking right at her. The Hun's corpse had already been turned into mush because of her. It was then nailed to a tree by her spear. The fresh blood flowed out from many openings on his chest, pooling on the ground. There was also some blood that trickled along the spear, which was now dripping onto the ground. Meanwhile, Lin Yu had finally found an opening as he battled the Hun. He cut the Hun's throat open without any hesitation. Fresh blood gushed out. The Hun gripped his neck as he fell down, while a strange sound gurgled from his throat. He writhed in pain on the ground. Lin Yu stepped on the Hun's chest at once. He raised his hands methodologically, then he swung his blade down to free the Hun from his suffering. Gah, what's with you just now? Lin Yu came to Lin Wan Yu's side with a bloody podow in his hand. He wiped at the blood on his face using the sleeve on his other hand. It's nothing. I don't know either. I just thought about... Nothing. Lin Wan Yua pulled out the podow from her waist with some frustration, but she was held back from charging by Lin Yu. Guh, follow me. Lin Wan Yua was about to retort, but she heard Lin Yu saying assertively, Guh, do you still remember when I went into the battlefield for the first time? Lin Wan Yua suddenly remembered. When Lin Yu had first walked into their tent shyly as he hugged his luggage, she'd raised her head, and for that instant it was as if she'd seen her younger brother Lin Feixing. Lin Yu had just been in the military camp for a few days before the Huns arrived. That day, he held up his spear with great effort, and as he was squeezed between the troops, he charged ahead by following them blindly. When Lin Wan Yua looked at Lin Yu's still budding back figure, she knew very clearly that for him to charge out there entirely untrained, he would surely not come back. And so she secretly followed behind Lin Yu. She dealt with the Huns who wanted to attack Lin Yu from behind twice consecutively. <laughs> Thank you. At that time, Lin Yu was jittering as he gripped his spear. He looked at Lin Wan Yua with eyes filled with horror from nearly dying, but he also was rejoicing from survival at the same time. He could not quite speak properly. Follow me. Lin Wan Yua kept Lin Yu protected behind her back as she used her podow to cleave their way out from being surrounded by the Huns. When Lin Wan Yu returned from her memory, she noticed that her only friend, who was like a younger brother to her, had already gotten taller than her by half a head before she knew it. Lin Yu protected Lin Wan Yu as while he did his best to rush forward towards areas with less people. Lin Wan Yu had already found her footing after a brief loss of control, hence she came up to Lin Yu's side instead. The two of them cooperated in tacit agreement, cleaving many Hun soldiers. The Hun soldiers who were injured fell to the ground, then the other soldiers followed up by piercing spears through their bodies. Just as the Lee Kingdom's army was gradually gaining the upper hand. Woo! 
A low and deep rolling sound of a signal horn spread over from far away. The Hun soldiers stopped their actions to kill once they heard it. They met each other's eyes, then gathered together to retreat. Lin Wan Yu furrowed her brows once she heard the unfamiliar signal horn. She kept feeling that there was something off about it, but she could not think of what it was right away. Do not pursue! General Li Mu shouted from his warhorse. Meeting each other's eyes, Lin Wan Yu and Lin Yu saw blood and filth all over each other's face. However, their hearts were immeasurably carefree. <laughs> Lin Yu looked at Lin Wan Yu as he laughed heartily. Lin Wan Yu laughed too, a laughter without any inhibitions. They were the only ones who could understand the meaning within such laughter. Li Mu heard their laughter as he sat on his horse. He looked towards them to find one of them was a young man covered with bloodstains without a single speck of clean skin showing, who was also carrying a familiar black bow on his back. Li Mu's eyes lit up right away. Go! Li Mu squeezed the horse's abdomen. The military horse snorted, then trotted slowly towards where its master wanted it to go. Lin Wan Yu and Lin Yu were still immersed in the joy of fighting shoulder to shoulder as brothers when they heard the sound of horse hooves approaching. The two of them turned their heads to see their marshal was looking down at them from a big tall horse. They kneeled on one knee right away and lowered their heads and said, Infantry soldier from Yi Camp, 3rd unit, Lin Fei Xing, greets the commander-in-chief. Infantry soldier from Yi Camp, 4th unit, Lin Yu, greets the commander-in-chief. You may rise. Understood, commander-in-chief. Lin Wan Yu and Lin Yu stood up from the ground together. Li Mu held the reins as he studied the two young men before him. Seeing they were covered entirely with bloodstains, but without a single injury, he nodded with satisfaction. Li Mu gave a few more looks to Lin Wan Yu, who carried his battle bow. Presently, other than satisfaction, Li Mu also had a few degrees of appreciation towards Lin Wan Yu. No matter if it was how she drew his two-stone bow, or her courage as she grabbed the spear and charged without hesitation, or how she was now standing before him covered with blood, yet completely unscathed. Those were all reasons why L Li Mu appreciated Lin Wan Yua. Of course, there was something even more important. As a seasoned veteran on the battlefield, Li Mu could keenly sense a battle spirit that many soldiers did not have from Lin Wan Yu. Once the camp has been made, both of you are to come see me at the big tent tonight. Li Mu left this sentence, then steered his horse away. But before he left, he took one more look at Lin Wan Yu. He kept feeling this young man seemed to be somewhat familiar. Li Mu's words were heard clearly by the surviving soldiers around them. In an instant, Lin Wan Yu and Lin Yu became the point of focus among the crowd. Everyone looked at the two of them with complicated gazes. There was envy, there was jealousy, and there was discontentment. Some of them thought, to receive the personal summons of the commander-in-chief, that's a fortune not everyone could have. Those two were probably going to have a meteoric rise from now on. But what even more people thought was, everyone here were all survivors of a big battle. What dog shit luck did they have to let these two score? However, the two people who had become a point of focus were entirely unaware of the stares. After being stunned for a moment, Lin Yu grabbed Lin Wan Yu's arms excitedly as he yelled like a child. Gah! The Commander-in-Chief summoned us! The Commander-in-Chief wants to see us! Gah, did you hear that? The Commander-in-Chief wants to see us in person! However, Lin Wan Yu was just woodenly letting Lin Yu shake her. She wanted to give him the same expression, but she could not do it at all. Dun dun dun! Bet you know why she's afraid. She's like, oh shit. Oh no. He knows. He figured it out. He did something. Yeah, of course not. But she's afraid he has. Mm -hmm. The whole reason she didn't want to get known in the first place. Um, that's where we'll stop there. So we finished through chapter 10. The first 10 chapters. Uh, our... our Poor princess in the capital is trying to work through a bunch of manipulative bastards, and our warrior on the front line has survived once again and is finally getting recognized for her talent. But whether or not that's a good thing, we'll find out eventually. Thank you all for listening. I'm going to try and get back to doing uh, readings more often. I don't know what times of day, because um, daily schedule is really up in the air, but um, at least a couple times a week we'll do readings. Uh, I want to get back to reading the Digital Devil Saga. We haven't read that one in a while, so that might be next. 
Um, thanks for listening and I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>